Hallelujah. The word that I believe God would have you receive even in this moment is don't give up on God because he won't, he won't. He ain't never going to give up on you even if you make your bed in hell he'll be right there waiting on you to call him if you know he's faithful give God praise in the house hallelujah Father, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be accepted in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer as we move in the things that you have ordained. Amen, amen, and amen. Give him praise one more time. <laughs> Hug your neighbor on the left and right and say, it's good for us to be here today. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord as you grab hold of your Bibles. I'm going to take a few moments. Uh, we've had such a revelatory word coming forth throughout the gathering. I thank all of you who uh, were able to participate, and I thank all of you who helped make it come to pass, and I'll be speaking to you and thanking you for days to come and the many lives that have been changed uh, because we've come together. So get uh, the CDs, DVDs, and all those ABCs as we move in the things that God has ordained. I, uh, a couple of things I want to read to you. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to uh, my, uh, focus on two uh, scriptures. Um, I stay open to God and completely, you know, I, uh, as I write messages or whatever, uh, from the whole time, please understand, I wrestle with the word because I'm constantly uh, being adjusted and uh, I'm not going to finish this this morning I, I'll finish it on Wednesday uh, but I want you to first go with me to Romans 12 Romans 12 Romans 12 uh, I hope you have something to write with I, I preached this this morning uh, I want to try to teach it now <clears throat> for you and that we move in it uh, I I only got uh, two-thirds of the verse in Romans 12. Romans 12. Romans 12 and 1. You have it? Say amen. It says, I beseech you therefore... Brethren, by the mercies of God, some of you are familiar, those who join us on the prayer line uh, know I, I, I spoke some things on this that I'm going to review today, that you present your body, bodies as living what? How do you present it? <laughs> Which is? And then we, we, we generally jump to this verse and yet never really capture it. Uh, do not be what? to this what? Uh, now, one of the reasons why I'm having you do this is as you learn this week, when you, when you make proclamations, when you declare things, you're establishing those things in your life. And it's good to hear it, but it's also even better to say it, okay? And so when I say that, I realize that some of us are just, you know, I'm listening to the word, but there's, a, there's an importance for you personally to put it in the atmosphere. You need to be your own best preacher. 
Amen. So by the time you come to worship on Sunday, you didn't, you didn't come to get nothing. You came to give because you're just in overflow. Every day you, you're, you're, you're moving out of the overflow of your spirit. Now watch this, uh, which is your living, uh, living sacrifice, holy and acceptable of God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be what? To what? But be what? By the what? And that you may what? That which is and say my mission is to prove what that is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. That, that, that's what God wants us to do. Now, we're very familiar with that. We're extremely familiar with that part, but yet we have not captured it. We have not captured it, and I've been ministering for over 30 years, and I have, I'm just now getting the revelation of that and getting the open thing. Much was said today about uh, uh, this week in reference to catching the revealed word of God, being getting a revelation. I'm sharing with you, and, I'm, and, and, and one of the things you've got to understand, I'm, I'm not teaching you. Uh, I am uh, awakening you. Uh, the Bible says, and when we start to deal with, uh, I'm going to go into righteousness, unrighteousness, and all those things, uh, not today, but as I move forward. Please understand, the Bible basically tells us that the word is already in us. I'm going to say that again. The word is in us. I want lay your hand on yourself. Say, the word, the word. is in me. Now, please understand, that's the reason why the Bible says in Ecclesiastes, he, hit, he put eternity in your heart. It's already in you. And so a lot of times when I'm ministering to you, I'm not, it's not quite like I'm telling you something new. I'm filling in little blanks and in the paragraphs and stuff of your spirit, waking up things in your spirit. Do you want to know why? Now, many of you have, have been in the world and you've been to clubs and stuff like that. Some of you, some of you have been so saved, you ain't never been to a club but you done done something. So don't play me. All right. And so, but, but, but with, with, with all that, uh, we, you, you, you like all kinds of music, all kinds of uh, uh, things, but there's something about praise and worship. There's just something about it. That's the reason, one of the reasons why the Bible says uh, forsake not the fellowship of the believers. There's something about when you do it yourself, by yourself, and it's something about when you get together with the saints and you, and you get lost in the worship, lost in God. And because what happens inside of you is you start remembering. You start remembering when you used to be at home with God. Please don't say you came out of eternity. Say, I came out of eternity into this brief thing called time. And I will return to eternity. Now, now, there's only one choice you have to make. I came from the Father before the foundation of earth. He, I came from him. I came in the time to go back into eternity. Now, who I spend eternity with on the other side is my choice. I'm either going back to heaven or I'm going to have a long, hot flash. All right now, so we're going to say, say so what, what, what happens in this thing called time uh, is very important. That's the reason why that it, it's not about you. It's not your thing. And time goes so fast. All of you just take a moment and think how old you are. And actually, that's not how old you are. So when you have your birthday, today is Bishop Jake's birthday, but this is not how old he is. Please understand, this is how long he's been in time. That's all. So when you celebrate your birthday, it's not talking about this is when I got started. I'm, I'm 60. I've been here. No, you, you're, you've been in time. So you, you're actually untimed. Please understand that this, this is a message. You pre-existed. You were alive before you, your mom and daddy started looking at each other crazy. Before they put that music on and all that stuff, you were already alive. 
And then you need to understand, I explained this a long time ago, you're already a champion, you're already more than a conqueror, because a billion sperms were released from your daddy when he was having intercourse with your mother, and in all of that, your, that one sperm that made you uniquely, you beat a billion to get to the egg. So you might as well tell the devil, I, I beat a billion before I even popped out the womb. Y'all ain't gonna get that. You already special just to be born. You need to say, I'm sorry. Say, say, I was a super swimming sperm. <laughs> All right, y'all, maybe I'm in the, maybe I'm, I need to be in the children's ministry or something. I thought I was with the adults. And so with all that, it has to be very important that you catch the revelation of now and make sure because what we do in time determines how we'll spend our eternity. All right? You can touch your name and say, I got that. Now, I got some good news for you because I'm, I'm going to take you somewhere and then come back. Some good news for you. Number one, I want you to know that I, 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 you don't have to wait to be set free because you're already free. Help me with, help me with this. Say, I don't have to wait. To be set free, I'm already free. Now, please understand that. I want you to understand what we're free from. Here's what we're free from. We've already been delivered. Please understand this. We've been delivered from all types of demonic oppression and bondage. Say, I'm delivered from demonic oppression and bondage. Say, I'm also delivered from bad habits and mental strongholds that I will ever face in my lifetime in time. Now watch it, please understand. So say I'm already free of that. Now somebody sitting there say, okay Bishop, that sounds good. As I said it, I pronounced it, I put it in the atmosphere, but I'm having a struggle with it. How do I do that? Well, you gotta first understand there has to be a revelation. Say revelation. Now the revelation on this comes from John 8 and 31 and 32, and I'll say it to you, or I'll read it to you, because uh, i got to move forward. I don't know, I'm not going to get finished with the verse I'm trying to get to. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed, as a matter of fact, I want you to turn there, John, turn to John 8, 30, 31, John 8, 31. And if you can, uh, those in imaging, if you can throw that up on the screen right quick, because I, I need to push some things uh, real quickly. Uh, when you have it, say Amen. John 8, 31 and 32 uh, from a New King James Version. It, and now, the, the first few words, everything, God puts some things in order. When, when you're reading the Bible, it's, it's not an arbitrary order. It is a definite prescription to be followed. If you don't follow it that way, if you don't understand it that way, you won't get the results of what the Word says. So with that, here we go. It said, then Jesus said to those Jews, here's the part, who believed. Say, to them who believed. Now, everything I'm saying this, uh, this morning, uh, if you don't believe it, you just might as well just, you know, take a nap. And then we'll get the choir back up in a minute. Because if you don't believe this, then you ain't going to cheat it. Now, he spoke to those who what? Let's say it again. He spoke to those who what? Now, can I tell you something? Let me help you with relationship. Please understand this. Don't, don't hang with folk who don't respect your word. Uh, I'm going to say it again. Don't hang with folk who don't respect your word. You don't need folk around you that won't value what you got to say. Either you're going to be celebrated, I'm not going to be hanging around and be tolerated. You done been through too much hell, too much school, you done learned too much, and your words are valuable. And if I'm going to be with somebody, I'm going to be like iron sharpening iron. I'm going to be pouring into you, and you need to be pouring into me, and we're valuing what each other say. I ain't got time to be chilling. I ain't got time to be dog hanging. I ain't got time to be buddy buddy. I got to be with somebody who's going to agree with me in the spirit, value what I say, believe in God, somebody I can touch and agree with to go higher, deeper, and more. So some of you need to delete some folk out your phone. And as, the, as Kathy said, then just or either text them saying, nobody got time for that. Don't call me no more. Now, it said to those who believe, say, I believe. Now, he said, if you are, <laughs> I'm not going to get that far. Ah! 
I got something he just gave me upstairs. That's why I was a little late coming down. He just gave me something upstairs that I didn't even say this morning. It just kind of just grabbed me. He, he said to those who believe, to, ah, come oh on. Watch this. He said to those who believe him. This is so important. Uh, the, the Bible says in, in, in uh, 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 Hebrews 11, 6, without faith, I'm about to pop up here, and I didn't even got to where I said, With, without faith is what? For them that, that them that come to God. Now, now watch this now, please, because a lot of you go to other folk. You go to your boss, you go, if you want to raise, go to God first. If you want to be healed, go to God first. If you're looking for a mate, go to God first. Because then if you believe that he is, he is a reward, you'll go to work and say, I know you're going to give me a right. Come in my office, I'm about to give you a right. I know that's right, I already know that. I already picked the day, named the amount, set it up, because I talked to the one who's in charge of you. And they say, how are they in charge of me? I didn't even say, he even turns the hearts of the devil. And so, <laughs> now, now I'm going somewhere. Y'all just have to bear with me. If this don't mean nothing to nobody, it means something to me. All right? Please hear this. Them that come to who? That there's a contingency there. Must. Now, I'm going to push you today, and I'm going to be through. Must believe that he is God. Jesus spoke to those who believe. I'm here to tell you, new birth, you're on the crux of being launched into something so fantastic, so marvelous that other folk had. I'm, please understand this. I ain't trying to preach for TV. I'm not, I don't even preach for you. I ain't got to impress you. You know me. I ain't putting on no show. But I got something for you today that God says, I want you to move in and you are on the launching pad into something called life and life more abundantly. You're being promoted from misery, promoted from drama, promoted from poverty, promoted from sickness, promoted from being down. You are the Uh, I, I'm trying to get somewhere. Watch this now. Watch this now. Uh. <laughs> Watch this, he said. Now you got to get this. I don't want to get ahead of me. Watch this, he says. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples. Now watch this. Uh, what, what he's basically saying, if you abide in my revelation, I'm about to give you a revelation. Uh, this is very powerful. If you abide in my revelation, uh, where there's no vision, where there's no revelation, the people perish, go unrestrained. He says, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples. You are going to be disciplined. Because why are you going to be disciplined? Because you're going to know the truth. And what is the truth going to do? And the truth. And the truth. It ain't going to set you free. We got set free as slaves 200 years ago and we still sat on the plantation. It's going to make you free. It, God says, I'm going to force you out of poverty. I'm going to force you out of sickness. I'm going to force you out of misery. I'm going to I'm going to force you out of generational curses. You, you, you missed that. I, I'm, I just, please don't say, y'all just have to bear with me. I've been preaching so many years, and I ain't never seen this. And we play with it. Touch your name. We've been playing with it, and we ain't hit it. So we about to hit the jackpot. <laughs> this is going to be, they just had that big lottery winner the other day. You about to hit it. <laughs> now, now watch this, please. I, 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 I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just. <sighs> Jesus said, Jesus said to those who believe him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. 
I got to slow down. Give me, just give me a little sweetener there, Brian. Just, just a little bit. Watch this. Now, which, watch this now. Go, go with me to Jeremiah 29, 11. I'm trying to get back over to Romans, but I, I got to mess with you right here. I'm just throw the mic down and holler. Y'all got Jeremiah 29, 11? No, I, I, never, I never sent this. And now, remember, he talked to those, who did he talk to? Those who what? Then Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith, it's impossible to what? Uh, for them that come to God must what? Believe that he what? That he is God. And he is a what? Of them that what? All right, now watch this now. Watch this now. Jeremiah 29, 11. Y'all got it? Watch this. He said, for I know the thoughts I think towards you, say the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not evil to give you a future. And a hope. Uh, uh, uh huh. What, 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 what's this? What, what, what's this? It, it, it's going it's to explode on you in a minute. He, he says, now watch this. He says, uh, the New Living Translation says, For I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future. And the hope, 12th verse says, in those days when you pray, say we, now in the Old Testament when it says in those days, it means now after Christ, death, burial, and resurrection, these are those days. Say, I'm in that day. So it says, now when you pray, I will listen. And if you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. <sighs> He says, I will be found by you, saith the Lord, and I will end your captivity and restore your fortunes. Now, now, Bishop, what, what, what does that mean? What, what are you trying to say? Now, I'm not even going get to get to Romans, so I got to give you those two verses on Wednesday. If you can't be here, stream me. Watch this now. The Lord said, my problem with you, new birth, is believe, thought, and me being God. What was this? What, what was this? His, his word says in Isaiah 55, uh, he, he sits up and he starts to talk to us. <sighs> and, and he says to us, uh, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. <sighs> Nor your ways, my ways. No, no. no. No, here's the thing. Look at me. Now, notice what God never said. He never said our thoughts were wrong. <laughs> he said his ways and his thoughts are better. Like you, you miss that. You miss that. Look, look at me. God said, look at me, y'all. On your best day, with your best thoughts about you, your bloodline, and the kingdom, you still are short from what I'm thinking. I'm, I'm, I, he sent me out here fresh for you to let you know 
whatever you thought I was going to do that you shouted about during uh, the gathering he said that ain't even that that's a bad thought for me because it's not high enough it's not great enough it's not he said he said Paul said Paul said he said he said that's why it says yeah, I I'm able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can or think which means what you thinking don't scratch the surface what, 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 are you, what are you talking about he said I am God and I'm tired of pitiful thinking he said I'm bigger than paying your rent I want to buy you the whole complex I'm bigger than getting a mortgage payment I want you to buy houses and land I'm bigger than getting rid of a headache I want to give you healing in your hand I'm bigger than what you're speaking about yeah, yeah, this. I'm speaking please hear me I just God said God just told me this he said I'm speaking multi millions out of my mouth now if you can catch this he said that some of you been praying just to have enough to get in front of the checks you wrote even today he said that you don't believe and you don't know that I'm God I want you to have Swiss bank accounts I want you to have all of that I want you to have so much wealth that your great grandbaby ain't gotta work because of the dust. I am God. You ain't catching this. This ain't in my notes. This is in my spirit. I need you to hear this. God says, I know the plans, I know the thoughts. You don't know them. You think too low, act too low, speak too low. Your ways are jacked up. You have conformed to this world, but if you believe I'm the creative work in miracles, I'll give you a new heart in spirit and in body. I'll open up your What's this now? What's this now? What's this now? What's this now? That's why he has a problem with us conforming to this world. I got to transform your thoughts. What's this? What's this? What's this? What's this now? Please hear this. Please hear this. Please hear this. God said, look, look at me now. Here's the problem. God says, look, look, please hear this, Newberg. The, the devil tried to make me stay home today. The devil told me I was tired. The devil said they didn't understand you was in the conference. But God said, my grace is sufficient. And he says, I got some mail special delivery to be given to that 1030 crowd. I didn't preach this early. I didn't preach. I'm not giving you warmed over, stirred over stuff. I'm giving you what God deposited in my spirit and releasing for you right now. Just now. I want to answer an age-old question. Lord, why is it the stuff ain't manifesting for me that I... Why ain't it happened yet? Look at me. God said it hadn't happened yet. Because you're trying to make your thought come to pass. <laughs> Watch this. I'm going to tell you what, what. Stand up, Jared Taylor. Jared Taylor, don't be scared. Stand up. I ain't going to tell on you. I love my babies.
Now, I need you to understand this. I need you to understand this. I need you to, don't y'all sit down. I know how y'all are. I'm good to my kids. I want you to say, and I, and I protect them so they can have a normal life. That's why I ain't got them all up in front of y'all. Y'all be trying to give them notes to bring me and all that stuff. Listen. I only want you to know who they are. Hear me. Hear me. And I want to bless them all the time. What's this? But I don't ever want them to forget where the blessing really came from. What's this now? What's this now? And to appreciate the giver. It ain't about y'all. Y'all my children and you got an inheritance. Now, now watch this. Why do you think in Deuteronomy 8.18 that God had to say to the people, look here, I want y'all to remember that it is me, God, who's giving you the ability to create wealth. He didn't say get, he said create it, which means, you, look here, he says, you don't, because some of you are broke and looking for a traditional job when the answer is inside of you. And if you can ever think, I got a job for you to create, I got a business for you to create. You say, why is it so hard on me, Lord? Because I'm trying to squeeze out of you the bigness that I put in you and you're trying to conform and I'm bigger than that. Please hear me. Now listen, he said, it is God, it is I who gives you the ability to create wealth to show forth the covenant I made with your father. Look, look at me, y'all. I want you to hear this because I want to throw a blessing at you. But God said, tell him to remember. I said, well, what? He says, I'm about to release, and I've been doing it in, in increments and in little things, but, but if you don't believe that I'm God, you stop it, not me. If you don't expect it, you stop it. Now what happened? I'm going to bless you, but I need you to be a disciple because once I get you out of debt, I don't need you to be a fool and go back in by the traditions of the world. I'm giving you grace. I'm giving you mercy. I'm giving you because I love you. But don't you sit up there and get 20 more credit cards. Don't you sit up there and start spending beyond and going fool and all that. Get some discipline. <laughs> look, look at me. If God had to say this before he blessed them, you know what he was saying? He's saying, I'm about to bless you so because I'm God that it's almost going to be impossible for you to remember. You, you know them folk who came to church every Sunday until they got a job? You know the folk who are always pitiful and stuff and be dragging up in church and when they get blessed, now they're too busy to come to church. And that's what God said. I'm about to bless you so that I don't want you to lose your praise. I don't want you to lose your worship. I don't want you to think that you done done something where you can't get on your face. I don't want you not to cry anymore. I don't want you to stop your running. I don't want you to stop your shouting. I don't want you to stop your witness. I'm about to bless you with generational wealth. Like if you want to receive it, just start pulling it in. I declare there's an anointing for finance to break through in this take it 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 no no watch it stop now watch this now I need you to just start patting your belly because you know what it ain't out there it's in you let somebody say it's in you. Witness to three people say millions are in you. Say debt cancellation is in you. Financial breakthrough is in you. Creativity of finance is in you. Prophesy to somebody. Tell them it's in you. 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 Find somebody else. Find somebody else. Oh, you better walk around. Your territory's been increased. Oh, you better walk around. You better walk around. Houses and land and business and buildings. Your office has been built. Overflow. Overflow. LC. 
Shaddai, El Shaddai, more than enough, more than enough, Elohim, creator God, yes, Jireh, my provider, he's in you. What is this now? What's this now? What's this now? What's this? What's this now? What's this now? You, you got to hear me do Romans 1 and 2, 12, 1 and 2. You got to hear it Wednesday because it ties in. I'm, I'm stuck here. I'm a park here. Uh, you can't be conformed to this world. Now, now hear this. Hear this. So the kingdom of God and everything that comes with it, put, put your hand on your belly, it's in me. Now no, watch this now. What, watch this now. I said this during the gathering. God gave it to me. God said to tell you, don't ever say I'm never going to be broke again because he said you never were. So if a, if a preacher comes in here and says, say, I'll never be broke again, I, I don't want to hear nobody say nothing. And he says, look, at, we ain't broke. We ain't never been broke. Just say, we didn't know how to get access to the funds that were available to us. I'm, I'm, Lord, give me an example. Listen, I had somebody wrote me a check, and I had to go to the bank and get it cash. It was a, a good-sized check, praise the Lord. But it was from another bank, and I had to go get it cash. And I took it up to the t to the teller, and the teller looked at me and and uh, <clears throat> wouldn't cash it. Uh, wouldn't give me access to the funds. Thank God I knew somebody in a higher position in the bank. And because I was a preacher, I wasn't going to go south. Because I was about to they tell me who the bank what drew, the, what the check was drawn on, what bank and all that. I'm about to say, girl, I got more money in here than you can swim in. You must not know whom I'm is. But it wouldn't give me access. And then somebody had to come and give me the nod. Oh, that, that, you better open up. <laughs> because they was worried about if the check was bad, how it was going to be covered. It, it was going to be covered. It was already covered. It was already there. She just didn't know that I had to get access. Now, now what, watch this. You already got it. But you're using, it's like even going, I said, uh, like going to the tilling machine. You got to know your code. Now, if you don't know your code, you can stick the thing in there and it can be money in there available to you, but the machine ain't going to give it to you. And guess what? If you put in the wrong code three times wrong, it's going to keep your card. Even though you still got money. And you can sit at the machine and say, devil, I rebuke you. <laughs> Loose my money. Go talk to a tiller. Just stand out in front of the <laughs> bank machine and, and bind it. Yeah. <laughs> now, what, what are you saying? This is the basic thing God told me to tell you. The Bible says, and when you pray, I will answer. But he says, I know the plans and thoughts I have. Jesus spoke 
to the Jews who believed. He said about faith, you ain't even going to please me because your thoughts are not mine, your ways are not mine, not that your thoughts are bad. You got some good thoughts. You got some good ways. Mine are greater. Watch, watch this. Watch this. Please understand. Uh, people who work around me, April, Andrew, uh, my kids know. They're, they're, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I do deer in the head like quick. They can ask me questions and I won't even answer. Because they ain't thinking like me. My kids ask me for stuff, and I'm looking like, you don't even know who you are. Don't even come to me like that. Don't even talk. I ain't going to answer that. That's so low. That's pitiful. Don't even know. When you really want to talk to me and must believe I am daddy. When you believe I am daddy, I'll reward you. But when you come to me, ask daddy stuff. Don't come to me with that punk stuff. Come, come to me. Come to me with something that's going to make me excited. Now, if you start thinking like me, you call me, I'll answer. God says, if you're not in the high place thinking the high thought that I'm thinking, if you don't allow me to give you a revelation of what I'm really thinking, not what you're thinking, that what I'm thinking is better than what you're thinking, as soon as you start catching hold of what I'm thinking, as soon as you call me, I'll answer. Watch this. Please hear this. Please hear this. Please hear this. He said, it's like the rain and snow that comes down and brings moisture to the earth. As soon as it brings moisture to the earth, a harvest. The harvest has to come. He said, that's the way my word is. Which means if you think higher, it, matter of fact, that's, that's it. What I got for you, you can't sense in your five senses. So the reason why so many saints are failing, you choose what school you want to go to. You choose your occupation. You choose who you're going to marry. You choose where you're supposed to go. And so God says, you chose it, pray to yourself. But if you got to my thoughts, whatever my word is, it will not return void. It has to harvest. It has to manifest. It has to come forth. And the problem is the gap in thinking in the last six months we have said what well, in the last year we have said something that we've never said in the 20 some odd years I've been here we've been saying God create miracles before we were just praying just do, do a miracle we never thought of the possibilities we can cancel heart surgery and God can create a new physical heart we can cancel kidney surgery and God can create a new God is getting excited about us I told you last Sunday he's turned towards us we have his full attention and now he said now talk big to me I want you to talk big to me I want you to talk big I'm sick of you still you went away from here and still paying praying for me to pay your rent he says I'm tired of you throwing money into somebody else's business and then you're praying to be healed, but you ain't got my thoughts. I'm not just, if you don't tell me what you're going to do after you get healed, why should I heal you? I might as well just let you die because you wasn't doing nothing before you got sick. And so therefore you ain't going to do nothing after you get sick. But if you say, God, heal me so I can be a vessel for you. Heal me so I can go around the world and witness. Heal me so I can do great exploits. Heal me because I'm not finished yet. I'm If you don't understand the process of God, all the way from Egypt, he brings them out to take them in. Every prayer must be a prayer of coming out, of deliverance and promotion. Not just deliver me from drugs, but then promote me to run the place, to get clean others up. Not just deliver me from being broke, teach me how to teach others how to move in that. Not just deliver me from this. He brings you out to take you in. And if you never get a vision of where you're going into, he ain't going to let you out. Three and a half million folk did not get a vision of the promised land. So God let them die in the wilderness. So God said, I'm not, please look at me. Announcement from the heavenly host. He says, I am not wasting deliverances.
Because if you don't move into something else, you'll go back. That's, that's what backslidden is. I got delivered, but I had no way. Watch, all you who get married, the problem is you plan for one day. You plan for one day and a hotel stay. You didn't think about what you was going to do the years that came after that. You didn't think that that person was going to get old. You didn't have any plans for other than bam, bam. And that's why so many marriages are ending in ruin is because we're planning for a day instead of a life. In case you didn't know, it ain't like the movies. You have mountains and valleys. And what makes your mountains good is that you stood together in the valley and you kept together and the devil tried to destroy you and you might have had an argument and you might have had a disagreement, but oh, how good it is to get back to the mountain and you learn something about God and you learn something about each other and the grass ain't greener on the other side. It's artificial turf. Can y'all hear me? Now, one of the things I'm doing, I'm taking authority 365 to start. Look, 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 look at me. Most of us write gold. Well, first of all, the reason why many of us are not successful is we don't write nothing. So if you haven't written anything about where you're going to be delivered to, you ain't going nowhere. It has to be written. What, what saved Jesus in his first challenge of the devil? What was written? That's God giving us a clue. If you're going to sustain in life, if you're going to overcome the devil, you've got to refer to what was written. And if you get the thought of God about your life, it's written, and you need to write it on a little card and keep it in your pocket and pull it out every day. Here's what God says about me. And whatever your goal of where you're going, it has to be something you can't do on your own. If you can do it on your own, look, look at me. If you can do it on your own, guess what God told me to tell you? You will do it on your own. He says, I don't have to honor or respect that because that's not my plan. He says, as soon as you get my thought and you holler out to me, bam, I'm there. And just like the rain comes down and waters and moist and brings forth immediate uh, vegetation and then goes back up through evaporation, he says, so is my word. It'll accomplish. Now, now, now I'm about to put you in sin. For the Bible says, he who knows to do good and doesn't is sin. So I want you, to, I need you to, back in the day, we didn't have Xbox and stuff, we had Etch-A-Sketch. It, it required no power. You can design stuff. You know something about that, Dick and Burroughs, don't you? You have Etch-A-Sketch. And then you do stuff and you mess up, you turn it over, shake it up, start all over. I, I, I don't know what you were thinking God was thinking, but God just told me, he said, turn it over, shake it up. He says, I'm bigger than that, I'm greater than that, you're bigger than that. Look at, look at me. C can you imagine this? this? This is all Bible. The Bible says, he went before you and fashioned our days before there were any days. Now, if you believe God is God, and he's on, 
Do you think he went and fashioned, oh, this day I think I'll just do drama. Drama this day. Let's do a week of Atlanta Housewives. Let me put in a little misery right here, misery. Then let me get them started. Let me have fun making them miserable. Can, can, can you look at me? We're not perfect. Put your hand and say, I'm not perfect. But as far as God is concerned, I am. Now I want you to look at me. I want you to look at me. If you grab this, you, you just holler. When God looks at us, he sees us whole. He can't look at unrighteousness. Please hear that. That's the power of the blood. He cannot look on unholiness. That's why when Jesus was <coughs> crucified, buried, resurrected, then the veil was rent that we can go into the holy. We couldn't go in there before because he could not see sin. It did not have an invitation in his presence. Which means now, everything he promised is yours. Now I need you to grab somebody by the hand. Everybody stand. I'm going to let you go. Come on. Come on, Harris, get ready. I'm going to let him go. Come on. I need you to hear this. I, I want to I give you homework. I just want to give you homework. Say, Lord, Lord give, me a give me a revelation of who I am, who I am. and what you have thought about me. Now he'll scare you. And everybody in here, you've been living less than the thought. You've been living according to your mind and the time. What's it? Be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this time, this, 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 this mold. Watch this. Because if you, if you do conform to this world, if jobs are a little bit hard to get, you will say it's recession. So automatically, because you have now conformed, you put your business on hold, you put your money on hold, you put God on hold, because you're waiting on Fox to keep you from falling off the financial cliff. And then the Bible said, watch those foxes. Has anybody ever, you were talking to that you loved and you got mad because they said, put you on hold and just seemed like they wouldn't come back? And just out of your own integrity, you was holding on the phone as like, and saying choice words. I know they, I know they, I just know they not. I, I'm just saying what God, God said, you put me on hold. And I'm sitting here getting frustrated because I got plans and thoughts for you and you Matter of fact, can I say this? Our thoughts keeps God from hearing us. He says, if you catch what I'm thinking about you, then you shall call me. And I will answer. Other than that, you children from another mother, because I don't even know what you're talking about. You want me to honor something I didn't think. You want me to bless something that's not in my DNA. If Rockefeller or Trump was to come in here and said, I want to adopt one of you, 
first of all, y'all fight to get to the altar to be the chosen one. I've seen how you almost killed somebody when somebody trying to give out a free CD. So if he said, I want to adopt one of you and give you the full privileges of being a little Trump, this would it'll be a riot. And then whoever walked out with him, he said, Rolls Royce, where's my bank account? I want to build a little Trump Tower. You, your mind would start because you realize who he is. Nothing changed in you other than you realized who he was. And because you were connected to Trump, you started asking for Trump things. Maybe you're not connected to God. Or maybe you just don't know him. For them that come to God must believe that he is. And that's the now of life. Because once you believe that you were adopted, once you believe that he is God, immediately you can start walking in what comes from God, not delay. And you don't have to wait till you die to go to heaven. Oh, I forgot to tell you. God adopted you. Oh, yes, he did. Your daddy adopted you. Adoption means you weren't his born son or daughter, which means he didn't have to take you. He wanted us. I don't care what you think about yourself. I'm going to tell you what God thinks about you. He wanted you. He came after you. Unfinished, wretch, undone, came after you. And, and, and let me tell you about your partner. And with God, say it with me, and with God, nothing is impossible. I, I need you to. The big thing that you talked yourself out of. God said, that was me thinking, not you. That's why you talked yourself out of it. He said, I know you didn't go to Spelman, but I need to show people at Spelman that I can take somebody that knows the man. And if you got the passion in the heart and know that I placed eternity in your heart before you were conceived in your mama's womb, I already programmed you for success. I'll take foolishness and confound the wise. If you ever get passionately excited about what God thinks about you and say, I know this thing is big and it seems like it's impossible, but it's me. It's, it's for this cause I was born. Now grab the hands and reach across the aisle because I got something I got to do real quick and then we're out. It's, it's 12.30. We're going. They got all kind of traffic construction going on so you ain't no need to be in a hurry. I want you to pray up and down the road. Just pray that your neighbors on the left and right will catch the thoughts of God about their life, about their children, about their bloodline. I hear God say, I'm going to bless you so that I've got to remind you to remember me. The eye had not seen, nor the ear has heard. I got stuff. They didn't think man could fly and two men in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina started flying. 
They thought a horse and buggy would be the only way of transportation to the kingdom come, but a man by the name of Henry Ford. Pray, it's bigger than that, it's bigger than that, it's bigger than that, it's bigger than that, it's bigger than that. Thank you, Father. Now, Father, we seal these prayers. Every prayer that is being prayed was a kingdom prayer. It wasn't a selfish prayer. So therefore, Father, we know that you answer kingdom prayers. And right now we rejoice because it is already done. We know it's done right now and we celebrate and we lift our hands. We open up our mouths and clap our hands and say, hallelujah. It is done. It is done. It is done. Come on. Let's celebrate. Hallelujah. If you believe the word that was ministered today, come on and celebrate. Hallelujah. Amen. We're getting ready to leave, and, but right now, there's a serious moment. We making it, sometimes we make it too super spiritual when it comes to salvation. 